Pick back up where I left off at. Um, instead of going back to the county jail. Thing is, it's like I want my little partner, my my little brother, goddamn me, uh, in a situation right now. And like I say, I wanted to do this to help a lot of people, but that situation really close to me. And I take time and I talk to dude and I give him all the information I can. So, in the midst of me giving him information and some of the stories I tell him. I think about things I might need to tell y'all, get y'all ready. Everything y'all going through, whether it be prison or life or, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I have been through a lot of stuff and I feel like I can help people from hitting them same walls, hitting them same pitfalls. If you can learn from my mistakes, please do it. You know what I'm saying? I wish I had a man in my life that could sit back and had told me the things that I was doing and gave me a better route. The men I had in my life wasn't shit. They wasn't shit, you know what I'm saying? So, move. I'm gonna be a better role model for y'all. Check this out. I'm gonna give you a story of the little dude versus the big dude. Now, I told y'all this, the next day after this fight, I started realizing it was a lot more Crips in the birds that I ain't know nothing about. Niggas just wasn't speaking to me. They wasn't showing me no love. They wasn't showing me nothing. Because they didn't know shit about me. And they was like, shit, nigga, you got to find out. I didn't know this type of shit. Like I said, I was green. So I didn't know how to sit back and peep a nigga and watch a nigga and goddamn me put a nigga to the test to see what he about before I ever go speak to him or fuck with him. I didn't know. But like I say, this is a nigga I met from Little Rock, man. Crip nigga named Steve Marshall. Black ass nigga. Uh, Steve was 20s. I don't remember exactly what kind of 20, but I know Steve was 20s from Little Rock. Uh, black as hell. Steve wasn't no short nigga. He's probably like 6'1. But he was skinny, you know what I'm saying? He was about, he was being pole skinny. Real nigga though, you know what I'm saying? And this is one of the niggas that I had, you know what I'm saying, I had met. And got cool with like me and Steve at Barna Unit. That was my dog. That was my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers tell me in the county jail outfit on trip, man. It, it, when you get to the penitentiary, you're gonna find a nigga just like you, bro. It's gonna be a nigga just like you. Y'all move the same, y'all think the same, you act the same, you know what I'm saying? You fuck with the same shit. That's gonna be who you fuck with. Whatever. But when I met Steve, I was like, you know what? Just that nigga, bro. I get to fuck with him. And before we even go further, 100 nigga. Well, nothing, ain't nothing fit to be said bad about this nigga. This nigga didn't do no fuck shit, no, none of that. But he taught me a lesson. Like I told you, you need to be able to sit back and watch other people and learn from their mistakes or their lessons. See, he taught me a couple of lessons. And you know what I'm saying? I'm bringing them up now because I realize it's going to be some more stories that Steve was going to be an intricate part in. Like I said, that was my road dog. So, Men see every day, you know, we get to work and shit. But this nigga, he, he got out the barracks before me. And he went and got a job. But this is before all that. We still in the whole squad barracks. Now, it's a gangster nigga in this barracks named Debo. Steve and Debo have both done time before. Matter of fact, I'm not sure that, that Steve is new to the penitentiary. I'm thinking he might still be on his on, on a Joseph way before I even got here. So me and Steve, we kicking it. 
Steve is, is putting you up on some of the game in the penitentiary. You know, we're taking you under the wing and shit. It's all good. There's one particular day. I'm not going to make this no longer drawn out story, but there's one particular day. I go to the whole squad. I come back. I don't remember what was going on, but I remember Steve had got something going on with him because he was icy white, starch pressed. So I don't remember, was it a visitation, uh, was it a job or whatever? I don't remember. We in the whole squad, bro, so I clothes is dirty, filthy, nasty. We working in the field. Our whites is brown. You see what I'm saying? This nigga Steve is icy white today. We go to the child hall. I don't remember everything they were serving that day, but I remember the jello because this is what started the shit, the motherfucking jello. So we just normal day, normal day. We going about our business. We in the child hall. Now let me describe this nigga Debo to you. Debo is a big nigga, like big wide nigga. Shit, shit off of him. Big ass arms, big ass shoulders. Big junk ass nigga, but just big. I'm talking about this nigga wrist is like this. This nigga is built like a motherfucking incredible hook look like. Nigga, your body proportion ain't even right. But I'm like, I'm asking nigga one day, I'm like, man, how you get so big, bro? He was like, shit, man. Nigga, I, ain't, I don't know. I used to be fat, bro. They asked these niggas, like, Steve, know. Like, they knew each other. He was like, ask Steve, he know. Nigga, first time I came to tell nigga, I was a big fat ass nigga, bro. I just started working out a little bit, nigga, and shit. What happened? Damn, boy, that shit don't make no sense. This nigga, Steve, tell me, like, man, that nigga big, man, bro. That nigga, he was hot. That nigga was fat, bro. Yeah, nigga, that shit look like muscle, nigga, but it's a lot of fat. That nigga got some muscle on it, but that's a lot of fat sitting on top of the muscle to make it look like the muscle big. I'm like, man, that nigga big, bro. He like, man, all right, bro, whatever. I'm trying to kill you. So it ain't, it ain't like they beeping them, but he just telling like, man, nigga, don't let that shit fool you, bro. This shit had me fooled. So we sitting in the child line, and it's me, Lil Steve behind me, Debo behind him. So I'm going, I'm getting my shit, get my food, well, my jello, boom. Steve behind me. Now Steve don't want no jello. Steve don't want the jello on his plate. I'm thinking this because Steve was Muslim. He just didn't want this shit on his plate. He didn't want it on his period. So when dude come back, he like, nah, bro, I'm straight on that jello. I don't even put it on my plate. Debo behind him like, man, go get that shit, bro. I eat that shit. He was like, man, I don't even want it on my plate, bro. Debo was like, man, go get the jello, nigga. He was like, man, I don't want that shit on my plate, bro. Now, dude want to give you my jello, he can give it to you, but I don't want it on my plate. So Debo was like, man, all right, bitch ass, nigga. Bullshit, nigga. Fuck that damn jello. So I'm, in my mind, nigga just in his feeling, you know what I'm saying? Because he ain't get the jello, nigga. Come on, go eat, nigga. Fuck it, nigga. Steve, man. This fuck, fuck the jello, bitch. It's all right, motherfucker. Nigga, just disrespect the shit out of me. That shit can't slack. And I'm telling you, I'm green. So I don't know how important it is to check every little thing a motherfucker say to you disrespect. Like I had to tell my little homeboy, I'm like, bro. Niggas in prison play mind games. So if you get to a point where you feel like a nigga might be playing with you, he is. You give a fuck if he really playing with you or not. If you feel like a nigga playing with you, they playing with you, bro. Because if you feel like it, there's 20 other niggas over there peeping the scene that feel like, oh, yeah, that nigga playing with those. And the whole game is how is you going to react? What you going to do? Because once you get out, like I told my nigga, once you get to a point where you's a bitch, you's a bitch. It ain't no coming back. Like, I don't give a fuck how you can fight, okay? But you was a bitch. So when little boy over there fuck with you and you decide you gonna whoop him, you're not gonna whoop him. Cause if 10 other niggas gonna jump up like, hold on nigga, what you doing? Man, that nigga took much. You told nigga you was a bitch. And we not fit to let no bitch whoop no real nigga. What the fuck you think fit to go on? And that boy I be trying to tell him, I'm like, bro, look, once you a real nigga, you a real nigga. Once you a bitch ass nigga, you a bitch ass nigga. Everybody got their place. So they gonna find out what place you go in when you first get done. It got to be done. That's where the story from the last story came from. Nigga had to find out what side I was on. I'm on the real nigga side. So I'm over here with Steve, man. 
And like I say, I'm green though, so I'm not really tripping about the shit, dude. And Debo just said to Steve, and Debo ain't tripping. If Steve ain't tripping, we all just sitting here eating. Debo ain't at the table with us. He's somewhere else. We get back to the birds and we chilling. I'm talking to Steve. Steve is facing me. And I'm talking about, we probably like three, four feet apart, just chopping up. We in the day room. Now, Debo come in the day room. He go in the bathroom. The CEO locked the door. Mm -hmm. like, so now we just all in this big dude in the bathroom. As soon as he slide back, like he was coming out the bathroom, when Steve seen that nigga come around that wall, the nigga was like, watch out, cuz. Like in the middle of conversation, ain't told me he was about to do nothing. The nigga grabbed me by my shoulder. Watch out, cuz. And when they arm came back like this, it was a hammer. Bow. 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 Man, he is raining these fists down, just uh, uh, uh. Hitting Debo everywhere he can hit him, but it's like this shit sounding off. But I'm talking about, about that third lick, blood. Fourth lick, blood. Fifth lick, man. I'm trying to hit this nigga about seven, eight times. <clears throat> Open that man's whole face up. This big ass nigga fell back on the floor in a bloody mess. Nothing but hands. And I'm watching it. Man, Steve is this nigga on this big going all the way down. Ain't no none of this. This nigga is skinny as hell. But he is hitting that nigga with bow, 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 bow. And I'm sitting like, what the fuck? Everybody jumping back like, damn. Like I'm telling you, we still in the we in the fresh berry. You know, we everybody here, we fresh niggas. Or oh, just not getting back to the jump. Man, matter of fact, I think that's what it was. I think Steve was a porter. I think that nigga was a very porter. That's why he was cleaning the shit. But um, man, Steve beat the brakes off this nigga, bro. And all I did was sit there and watch, like this big ass nigga just let you do him like that. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, man, this big ass nigga. But Steve told me, he said, man, don't let that shit fool you, bro. Don't let that big shit fool you. And that's what I learned right there. I'm like, man, don't let that big shit fool you, man. A lot of these niggas get big to keep a nigga off their ass. A lot of these niggas get big so they don't have to fight. They don't know how to fight. They can't fight. When a nigga get the whooping on their ass and it's time to fight, man, these niggas head down, they doing this shit. I had never seen a nigga goddamn me just sit back like when you hitting a speed bag. And that's how he was hitting that nigga, like he was hitting the motherfucking speed bag. But this shit here and this shit here, woo! Man, he was breaking that nigga face bones, bro. And he ain't go to jail. We talked about that night. He was telling, I'm like, well, I asked him. Like I said, I was young. I was curious. I'm like, bro, why? How you fight like that, bro? He like, he said, nigga. He told me. He broke it down to me, like, bro, from here to here, nigga, that's a hammer. Like you hammering a nail in. Nigga, that's a hammer. And when they hit you, it's hitting like a hammer. You're not going to break that. You're not going to break it, bro. He said, like, you punch a nigga like that, you're going to break all this. After a while, you can't even hit a nigga no more. You done broke all this. You hit a nigga up here, you broke all that, bro. I hit a nigga up there, I'm going to give a nigga a concussion. And I'm going to draw back and I'm going to hit a nigga ass again. What's up with it? So I'm like, dude, I had to learn. Don't let these situations of these people fool you because they be sometimes that's just a big ass point man if you got some heart then you got some motherfucking heart can't nobody else give it to you you just got to get to a place where you understand look here man this is what i got to go through and this shit applies to prison it applies to everyday life when you come to a point where you realize look here man this is the situation this is what i got to do now it's just up to me to get out my ass and do it. You see what I'm saying? I could have came out of prison like a lot of other niggas. Just ready to get even mad at the world, ready to fuck up, ready to go right back. Nigga, it was on my mind when I came home, goddamn me, 16 years, I'm not going back. It ain't shit in that motherfucker for me. They done got all the time they gonna get for me. 
and I'm just gonna be real with you. Man, doing right and being goddamn me, you know what I'm saying? It seems like it's a square life, man, but this shit is really rewarding. Like it feel good to get the shit that you get and know that it's yours. You ain't got to look over your shoulder. The police ain't coming. Motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker might still be wanting to take your shit, but what I'm saying is you're gonna go a lot harder for something that you work for than you is for something that you took from me. Easy come, easy go. Hard come, you're not letting it go. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, I done did a whole bunch of shit in my motherfucking life. I done had a whole bunch of money. I done ran through it. I don't run through money like that no more. But I do. I be making my motherfucking money. You know what I'm saying? I pay. I take care of my family. I pay my mama mortgage, all that shit. It's on me. And I'd be a damn fool to go back to prison knowing that I got responsibilities out here. I can't goddamn me take care of no motherfucker. I'm calling home asking motherfuckers to see me for the fifth dollar. Nah, motherfucker, I got motherfuckers out here. I got to get eight hundred to thousand dollars too. I'm grown now. I'm not 18 years old no more without a care in the world. These motherfuckers used to look out for me. They need help now. It's on me. So I had to straighten my shit up and get there. I had to do that shit. But you know what I'm saying? Just like it's a motivation. I'm going to tell y'all like this, man. When it come down to being successful and getting what you want out of life, it's this simple. I imagine I'm going to just give you the story. I'm going to give you what it was given to me. It was a man that wanted to be successful. He didn't know what the fuck to do. He ain't had no idea. So he got online, you know, on YouTube, and he looking up people that's successful. And he started finding this one dude that all the successful people were talking about. And he realized this dude has a course on being successful and getting your shit together, getting your life right. And the seminar was supposed to be coming to the city in his state. So he signed up for it. He paid the money. He went down there and he watched the seminar. And the next night he went back. He's like, man, I'm going to watch this shit. I'm going to pay again. I'm going to watch it again. So he did it again. Dude was there for a week. And the man stayed the whole week. And he went every day that week. And at the end, he, he, he stayed after. He was like, man, I need to talk to dude. So the man came out there. And he stopped me, talked to me. Like, look, man, I've been coming all week, man. And I need to know because I've been through so much shit. And I'm going to fail you. And I'm going to fuck up. And ain't nothing been going right for me. He said, man. He said, you've been coming all week. He was like, yeah, I've been coming all week. He said, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you what. If you've been coming all week, you really want to be successful. And I'm going I'm to make sure I'm going to help you out. Then what you do. He said, meet me at this address on the beach in the morning at 5 o'clock. Don't be late. He said, man, I'm, I'm going to be there, bro. I'm going to beat her. I, I'm not going to be late, bro. I'm going to beat her. Took the address. He went home. Got him some eat. He got him some sleep. Set his alarm clock. He got up. Boom. Five o'clock. He strolling. Goddamn me coming down the beach. 515. He looking around. Where's his man at? 530. He thinking his man is scam me. He gone. Damn. So he sit down. Got his hands ahead and hear somebody calling. He's like, hey. He look up. And this dude, dude is out there in the ocean. He's in the water already. He's like, what's up, bro? Come on. So he come on out there. He's like, man, I thought you wasn't coming. He's like, dude, I was here at 430. I said, man, you say five. He said, yeah, I told you to be here at five. But if you want to be successful, you ain't going to be here at five. You're going to be here at 430. So he said, OK, OK. So he drug him out in the water. He's like, man, come out here. You want to be successful? I'm going to teach you something. And he say, what you going to teach me? He said, I'm going to teach you how to be successful. And he got him out there and he grabbed him. He put his hands on his shoulder. He said, now let me ask you a question. You say you're going through a whole lot of shit. What you going through? He said, man, my job ain't paying me enough money. I got these kids, my wife on my ass. He said, man, my mortgage. I'm about to lose my house. Boom, boom, bam. Nigga, I ain't finished school. I got these debts. There's all this shit, typical shit that we all go through. And the man told him, okay. 
So what do you want? He say, man, I want to get my shit together. I want to make the money and take care of my family. I want to start a business. I want to do all these things. You know, I got a vision. I know what I want to do. I just can't. I can't seem to get it done. And he say, man, I'm going to teach you right now how to be successful. He took the man with his hands on his shoulder. He pushed his ass under the water. And he held him under there. And man was trying to get back up. And he wasn't letting that motherfucker up. And the earth bubble come this man dying down. He's holding his bitch under the water. He holding him down. And this man is trying to get up and finally brought his ass back up. And the man, <laughs> he said, nah, I wasn't trying to kill you. I just fixed you. What you mean you fixed me? He said, man, let me ask you a question. The man trying to breathe. He's like, when you was under that water, what did you want? He said, I wanted to get the fuck from under that water. He said, why? He said, I wanted to breathe. Nigga, I was dying. He said, you were dying. You wanted to breathe. He said, Dying is final. Breath keep you alive. You needed to breathe. You didn't want to breathe. You needed to breathe. And you were trying to do everything in your power. Well, you were going to die trying to breathe. You was never going to stop trying to breathe. He said, right. He said, now, close your motherfucking eyes. Your wife, your kids, your job, your problems. Nigga, that's water. Your success is your breath. How bad do you want that breath? Do you want it more than these problems? Is you really fucked up about this water around you or do you want to breathe? Because the water might kill you, but you're going to keep trying to breathe. So do you really want to be successful? Because when you want to be successful, you're not going to close your eyes and think about the wife and the problems and the kids and the dog and the job. You're going to close your eyes, nigga. You're going to think about success. You're going to dream about success. When it's time to eat, you're going to see success on the plate. You ain't fucked about nothing else but this breath because ain't nothing else important but this breath. Now, do you want to be successful? The nigga told me yes, they wouldn't. You got shit to worry about. Go do it. From this point forward, that's all that matters. Go do it. When you die, either you're going to be successful or you're going to be trying to be successful. But never again is you going to sit here complaining and worry about the shit that's fucking with you when you know there's something you should be doing. And the man understood. He got it. Like, bro, if you push me back under that water right now, I'm going to breathe. And I'm going to think about my life and all the shit that's drowning me and surrounding me and how it don't really matter. I don't give a damn how it affect me. It don't really matter because that's not what I'm focused on. I got to a point where I was focused on getting out of that prison. And I was focused on making the people around me proud. And I was focused on not going back. So far, I'm successful. Compared to what I thought I would be, what I hoped I would be when I came home, I'm very successful. I'm so far beyond where I ever thought I would be. I'm proud of me. Thing is, a lot of y'all ain't fucked up the way I fucked up yet, and you ain't never got to it. I'm gonna do whatever I can to make sure you don't. But we as black people, man, there's so much things we can do. And I'm gonna make sure.